You're watching the news on Bahrain International. I'm Hamid Shaban. Good evening. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa delegated His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa to head the delegation of the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Riyadh Chinese Cooperation and Development Summit that was held with the President of the People's Republic of China, Xi Jinping, in Riyadh. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister expressed deep gratitude and appreciation to the custodian of the two holy mosques, His Majesty King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud of Saudi Arabia, and to the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud. For the warm welcome His Royal Highness received upon his arrival. His Royal Highness emphasized Saudi Arabia's pivotal role in championing the Arab and Islamic causes, noting the Kingdom's commitment to supporting regional and international efforts aimed at furthering global development, security and safety. His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad highlighted the continued advancement of strategic Arab-Sino relations and the importance of furthering the multi-faceted relations to achieve common goals. His Royal Highness expressed his hopes that the summit would constructively strengthen Arab partnership with China to build a future of development and advancement that benefits all. Their Majesties and Highnesses, the leaders and heads of the delegations of the Gulf Cooperation Council states concluded in Riyadh their 43rd session of the Supreme Council. The summit was chaired on behalf of the custodian of the two holy mosques by His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. The Supreme Council commended the outcomes of the GCC American Summit held in Jeddah on July the 16th within the framework of the strategic partnership between the GCC and the United States of America and the Jeddah Summit for Security and Development between the GCC, Jordan, Iraq, Egypt and the United States. The Council welcomed the convening of the Riyadh GCC Chinese Summit for Cooperation and Development and the Riyadh Arab Sino Summit for Cooperation and Development on December the 9th of 2022. The Council praised the results of the Bahrain Forum for Dialogue East and West for Human Coexistence which was held early in November 2022 under the patronage of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. During the visit of His Holiness Pope Francis, Pope of the Vatican and His Eminence Dr. Ahmed Al-Tayyib, Sheikh of Al-Azhar and Chairman of the Council of Muslim All Elders to the King of Bahrain. The Supreme Council welcomed the results of the second edition of the Green Middle East Initiative Summit, which was held in Sharm el Sheikh under the chairmanship of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the Arab Republic of Egypt on November the 7th. The Council praised the pioneering role played by the United Arab Emirates in confronting climate change and renewed its welcome and support for the UAE's hosting of COP28 in 2023. The Council commended the success achieved in the parliamentary and municipal elections in the Kingdom of Bahrain to consolidate political gains, protect achievements, and support the process of progress and prosperity in the kingdom. The Supreme Council commended the Sultanate of Oman's announcement of adopting the year 2050 as the date for achieving zero carbon neutrality. The Council commended the State of Kuwait's announcement of adopting the year 2050 as a date for achieving carbon neutrality in the oil and gas sectors. The Council affirmed its support for the decisions of the OPEC Plus Group, aimed at achieving balance in the oil markets, promoting prosperity for the peoples of the region and the world, and supporting global economic growth. The Supreme Council reviewed the report of the General Secretariat on the progress made in implementing the 
the vision of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, to enhance joint Gulf action, which was approved by the Supreme Council at its 36th session held in December of 2015. The Council was briefed on the results of the consultations regarding the implementation of the decision of the Supreme Council at its 32nd session regarding the proposal of the late custodian of the two holy mosques, King Abdullah bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, to move from the stage of cooperation to the stage of union. The Council affirmed its keenness to strengthen and cohesion of the Cooperation Council unity among its members and the achievement of more coordination, integration and interdependence in all fields. The Council reviewed the development of the joint GCC action in the work program of the Economic and Development Affairs Authority and directed the importance of accelerating the achievement of economic unity among the GCC countries. The Council affirmed the adoption of the main pillars of energy transition, energy security, economic development and climate change. The Council directed the speedy completion of the ongoing free trade agreement negotiations and the start of free trade negotiations in accordance with the priorities of the GCC states. It praised the success of the drills carried out by the Unified Military Command and its affiliated units and centers during the year 2022. The Council also praised the success of the joint Bahraini Emirati anti terror exercise, Jalmud 3, which was concluded on November the 10th as part of the efforts undertaken by the GCC countries in combating terrorism. The Supreme Council reiterated the GCC state's keenness to maintain stability and security in the region, support the prosperity of their people, and strengthen the Council's relations with brotherly and friendly countries and regional and international organizations. The Riyadh Summit for Cooperation and Development between the GCC and the People's Republic of China also issued the following statement. The leaders agreed to strengthen the existing strategic partnership between the GCC and China. The leaders directed the continuation of the strategic dialogue between the two sides at all levels to discuss issues of common concern and coordinate positions on them, support international economic recovery efforts, address the negative economic efforts of the coronavirus pandemic and other challenges. The leaders emphasized the importance of mutual support in order to achieve the common interests of both sides. The leaders stressed the importance of continuing to deepen cooperation between the two sides in the fields of energy, trade, investment, finance, industry, advanced technology, space and health in the common interests of both sides. The leaders expressed their keenness to promote dialogue between civilizations, communication and mutual benefit between different cultures and to preserve cultural diversity. They emphasized that tolerance and coexistence between nations and peoples are among the most important principles and values upon which the international community is based. The leaders expressed their condemnation of terrorism, whatever its source, and their rejection of all its forms and manifestations, and worked to dry up its sources of financing and expressed their determination to strengthen regional and international efforts to combat terrorism and extremism. The leaders discussed regional and international issues where visions agreed on the importance of concerted efforts to achieve peace, security, stability and prosperity in all parts of the world and the priority of restoring international peace and security. The leaders stressed the need to support the treaty of the non-proliferation of nuclear weapons, prevent the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction in the GCC region and ensure the peaceful nature of the Iranian nuclear program. The two sides stressed the need for relations between the GCC states and Iran to be based on following the principle of good neighborliness and non-interference and internal affairs. The leaders stress the importance of a comprehensive dialogue with the participation of the countries of the region to address the Iranian nuclear file and destabilizing regional activities. The leaders affirmed their support for all peaceful efforts, including the initiative and endeavors of the United Arab Emirates to reach a peaceful solution to the issue of the three islands, Greater Tanab, Lesser Tanab, and Abu Musa. At the conclusion of the first summit in Riyadh, Arab and Chinese leaders agreed on strengthening strategic partnerships in all domains for a better future for the nations. The leaders also voiced readiness to deepen Arab-Sino cooperation in various fields through existing mechanisms within the framework of the Arab-China Cooperation Forum. They underlined the need for joint action to confront terrorist and extremist organizations that operate on their lands and support the efforts made by Lebanon, Somalia and Sudan to achieve security, stability, development, prosperity and combat terrorism and support the efforts of the United Nations and the League of Arab States in this regard. The Chinese side affirmed its support for the Arab countries to solve security issues in the region through solidarity and cooperation, and its support for the Arab people to explore their own development paths with their independent will. They also backed the international efforts within the framework of the United Nations to combat climate change, including the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change and the Paris Agreement within its framework and supporting initiatives aimed at achieving green development, including Saudi Arabia's Green Middle East Initiative 
Initiative and China's Green Silk Road Initiative. They emphasize the importance of the international community avoiding exclusion major energy sources or neglecting investment in them, which leads to challenges in energy markets and an unequal impact, especially on developing societies and countries, with that to adopt with the need to adopt a balanced approach policy to promote global economic growth, which is closely linked to energy, security and stability, by taking advantage of various energy sources and applying circular carbon economy solutions to reach zero emissions and build sustainable communities. They backed efforts aimed at preventing the spread of nuclear weapons and other weapons of mass destruction in accordance with the Treaty of the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons, the NPT, as a cornerstone of the international system for non-proliferation and stressing the importance of freeing the Middle East from weapons of mass destruction. They eyed closer cooperation to combat terrorism, condemning terrorism in all its forms, images and motives, and the need to combat it and not link it to any race, religion, nationality or civilization, uprooting its roots and drying up its sources in addition to rejecting double standards and combating terrorism. They called for promoting dialogue among civilizations and respecting different cultures, rejecting claims of hatred, extremism and clash of civilizations between followers of religions and cultures, emphasizing opposition to Islamophobia in all its forms. His Royal the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa delegated the personal representative of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for the Environment, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to attend the closing ceremony of the Ironman Middle East Championship, which was hosted by the Kingdom of Bahrain for three days in the presence of the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and the first Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, President of the General Sports Authority, and President of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh. Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa. Also present at the closing ceremony were their excellencies and excellencies and ministers on this occasion. His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa expressed his gratitude and pride in the patronage of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa for the global event, which sheds light on the achievements made by the kingdom in the prosperous era of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Highness affirmed that the success recorded by the Kingdom of Bahrain in hosting the World Championship confirms the professional capabilities of the kingdom in organizing major events towards achieving Bahrain's economic vision 2030 and the distinguished promotion of the kingdom through sporting events, which plays a prominent role in the recovery of the economy. His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad praised the distinguished success witnessed by the championship, which will be an incentive to continue organizing the championship in the coming years, congratulating all participants who won the first positions in various categories. The winners in various categories, as well as the ministries and institutions contributed to the organization of the championship, were honored. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Works and Youth Affairs, leader of the royal team, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, participated in the 160-kilometer race within the National Day Endurance Championship organized by the Royal Equestrian and Endurance Federation with the participation of a wide range of riders. The victorious team won the one local 120-kilometer race title in the presence of the President of the Royal Equestrian and Endurance Federation, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Abdullah Al Khalifa. His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa led the race on the horse Darko Le Maguire 
Mayor. His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamid affirmed that the outstanding levels witnessed by the National Day Endurance Championship confirmed the keenness of the riders to make efforts to reflect the advanced image of the endurance sport and contribute to the continuation of achieving external achievements, especially since the local championships are considered a real gateway to these achievements. His Highness stated that the National Day Championship is of great importance to all riders and stables, especially as it coincides with the Kingdom of Bahrain celebrations of the glorious National Day and His Majesty's accession to the throne. His Highness Sheikh Nasser praised the outstanding efforts of the Royal Equestrian and Endurance Federation headed by His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Abdullah Al Khalifa in organizing the championship. His Highness Sheikh Nasser expressed his happiness with the victory of the victorious team in the 120-kilometer race and the crowning of the rider Abdullah Rawai in the first place, praising the efforts of all riders who participated in the various races. The president of the Royal Equestrian and Endurance Federation crowned winners of the National Day Endurance Championship where the victorious team won the local 120-kilometer race. Marking the International Human Rights Day, the Speaker of the Representative Council, Fawzia Zainal, said that the Kingdom of Bahrain, under the leadership of His Majesty the King, has placed human rights protection as an authentic pillar of national action. She referred to the honorable successes and achievements achieved by the Kingdom in the field of promoting and respecting human rights in various fields. Zainal stressed that the legislative authority attaches great importance to the file of human rights and freedoms and the accompanying relevant laws to promoting and consolidating rights. Meanwhile, Shura Council Chairman Ali bin Saleh Hassan affirmed that the bright visions and ambitious aspirations of His Majesty the King contribute to the sustainability of the consolidation and development of the human rights system in the Kingdom of Bahrain. He praised the follow-up and keenness of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister in advancing the human rights system and motivating and encouraging the team of Bahrain to be creative and innovative. He stressed that the legislative authority pays special and continuous attention to updating the laws in force and enacting more legislation supporting the comprehensive rights guaranteed by the Constitution. 
The Attorney General, Dr. Ali Bouainain, affirmed that the Universal Declaration of Human Rights is one of the most important major achievements of the United Nations in the field of human rights, being the common standard of fundamental rights to be protected and a beacon of human rights at the national and international levels. He indicated that the Kingdom of Bahrain, under the leadership of His Majesty the King of the country, now possesses a legislative and institutional structure that works to consolidate human rights in concept and reality to the optimal application of the high standards and principles of human rights. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Zayani, praised the achievements of the Kingdom of Bahrain as a model in respecting human rights and fundamental freedoms and preserving his dignity in light of the wise approach of His Majesty the King and the directives of the government headed by His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. The, the minister valued the kingdom's excellence in an integrated system for the protection of civil and political rights, foremost of which is the freedom of opinion and expression and criminal justice. The minister noted Bahrain's keenness to strengthen partnership with the United Nations organizations in the development and human rights fields, stressing the kingdom's determination to continue its achievements in protecting rights and freedoms in accordance with the National Plan for Human Rights. For his part, the president of the National Institution for Human Rights, Ali al Darazi, has affirmed the top priority accorded by the Kingdom of Bahrain to protecting human rights, marking the Human Rights Day in which the UN General Assembly endorsed the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in 1948, which is observed on the 10th of December of every year. Al Darazi said that the Kingdom of Bahrain, under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al Khalifa and the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad al Khalifa, has put a great emphasis on protecting and respecting human rights as one of the main pillars of its development march. The president of NIHR lauded Bahrain's commitment to international agreements and conventions on human rights. He praised the kingdom's strides in protecting human rights and preserving the dignity of citizens and residents. He asserted that NIHR continues to monitor the kingdom's commitment to the international human rights agreements and conventions. In the presence of the Vice President of the Supreme Council for the Environment and Vice Chairman of the Supreme Authority of the Rashid Equestrian and Horse Racing Club, His Highness Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid Al Khalifa, the first series of races of the second edition of the Bahrain International Horse Racing Championship were held yesterday, organized by the Rashid Equestrian and Horse Racing Club on the club's racetrack with the participation of owners, trainers and horses from all over the world. The race comprised eight events. Trophies were presented to the winners. Minister of Municipalities and Agriculture Affairs Engineer Wa Al bin Nasr Lambarak inaugurated the 10th edition of the Bahraini Farmers Market at Budaya Botanical Garden themed Our Harvest is Bahraini. In the presence of the Tourism Minister Fatma bint Ja'far al Sayrafi and the Secretary General of the National Initiative for Agriculture Development, Sheikha Maram bint Isa al Khalifa. Al Lambarak expressed pleasure at launching the 10th edition of the Farmers Market, which reflects the great interest of the Municipalities Affairs and Agricultural Ministry based on the directives of the government led by His Royal Highness. 
Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, on providing various types of support to the agricultural sector, launching qualitative initiatives to promote it and making it an important tributary to Bahrain's food security strategy. For her part, the Secretary General of the NIAD, Sheikha Maram bin Isa Al Khalifa, affirmed that the, there is unwavering support to the Bahraini farmers' market is in line with its keenness on creating suitable conditions for the agricultural sector to flourish, particularly concerning the provision of a platform for Bahraini farmers to sell their products, attract customers and diversify their products. The chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Bahrain Institute for Political Development, BIPD, Ali bin Mohammed al ramehi headed BIPD's board meeting. al ramehi affirmed the role of the National Program for Parliamentary and Municipal Elections, Derrib, in reinforcing the democratic process in the Kingdom of Bahrain, headed by His Majesty the King. He said that 136 of Derrib's participants were electoral candidates, highlighting that 14 won parliamentary seats while 5 won municipal seats. He added that the total number of partner participants in BIPD's various programs this year exceeded 4,000 half of which were women. Aramehe reinstated that the institute will continue playing its national role in enhancing the democratic march by implementing programs and activities that contribute to reinforcing patriotism and allegiance. As part of Bahrain's season of festivities, the Embassy of the Kingdom of Bahrain to the Italian Republic held a reception marking Bahrain's National Day. The commemoration of the establishment of the modern Bahraini state during the era of the founder Ahmed al-Fatih as an Arab and Muslim country in 1783 AD and the anniversary of His Majesty the King's accession to the throne. On this occasion, Bahrain's ambassador to Italy, Dr. Nasser Mohammed al-Blushi, extended his deepest congratulations to His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. He welcomed all the guests and the guests of honor, the upper Apostolic Non Schiacher to Italy and San Marino Emil Paul Scherig, and the Italian Special Envoy for the Protection of Freedom of Religion or Belief and Interreligious Dialogue, Dr. Andrea Benzo, who delivered speeches on the occasion. Ambassador Blushi delivered a speech in which he highlighted the Kingdom of Bahrain's keenness on interfaith dialogue and international peace, recalling the official visit of His Holiness Pope of the Vatican. He also welcomed the guests to the photo gallery organized by the embassy, which exhibits historical pictures of places of worship for various religions and Bahrain, pictures of His Holiness Pope of the Vatican during his visit to Bahrain, and other pictures of the Kingdom of Bahrain. Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority announced the launch of festive light celebration in cooperation with the capital, Muharraq, Northern and Southern Governorates, several government bodies and the private sector. The celebrations, which come as part of the events and activities of the season of festivities, include a wide range of activities for several occasions, which will run throughout the month of December. Festive lights will be held across various locations and venues in Bahrain, including Sheikh Khalifa Al Kabir Highway, Airport Avenue, Al Ghos Highway, Head Intersection, Raya Highway in Muharraq, Governorate, December the 16th Avenue, Rafar Clock Tower Roundabout, Isa Town Roundabout, Zalag Avenue, Crown Prince Avenue, and Rafar Road in the Southern Governorate. In addition to Adliya Block 338, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Highway, King Faisal Highway in the Capital Governorate, King Fahad Causeway, Saar Avenue 13, Crown Prince Roundabout, and the Southern Entrance of Hamid Town in the Northern Governorate. Many venues will be decorated in white, red, and other colors as lights frame as part of the seasons of festivities, identity marking Bahrain's National Day festivities.